From time to time, the world is gifted with truly extraordinary individuals who have the drive, the vision, the passion, and fearless determination. There's one place in this world that produces far more than its fair share of these remarkable people, California. Tonight, we pause to honor a group of legendary individuals who dared to dream and went on to make their mark in history. Please welcome the first ever inductees to the California Hall of Fame and recipients of the Hall of Fame Award. Alice Walker. <laughs> Billie Jean King. Dr. Sally K. Ride. Dr. David D. Ho. The Packard family, represented tonight by David Whitley Packard. The Hearst family, represented tonight by Steve Hearst. Walt Disney, represented tonight by his daughter, Diane Disney Miller. Frank O. Deere. John Muir, represented tonight by his grandson, Ross Hanna. Amelia Earhart, represented tonight by her niece, Amy Clutton. Clint Eastwood, Cesar Chavez, represented tonight by his family member, Paul Chavez, Ronald Reagan, represented tonight by his children, Patty Davis and Ron Reagan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome California State Librarian Emeritus, Kevin Starr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Kevin Starr, California State Librarian Emeritus, Professor of History at the University of Southern California, and Chair of the Academic Advisory Council to this great museum. 155 years ago, California was admitted to the American Union as its 31st state. An American state is many things. Foremost, it is a government designed to promote and protect the well-being of its citizens. But a state is more than a government, even a state as heroic in scale as is California. A state is a human community. Tonight, that community is gathering in this hall in the presence of its governor and first lady to honor those Californians who, through the decades, have helped California further define its distinctive mystique. Because of them, California has become not only a great state in terms of its government, but also a cutting edge society in terms of its culture. As an historian of the California experience, I also believe that in honoring these signature Californians, California itself becomes a more mature commonwealth. Let those lives also represent the millions of hardworking and community-oriented Californians who will continue to influence our state, our society, and our mutual commonwealth called California. A.P. Giannini, founder of the Bank of America, built his innovative enterprise with the support of millions of hardworking Californians. And so it is no surprise to me that the Bank of America has generously agreed to sponsor this Hall of Fame program. It is now my pleasure to introduce a distinguished officer of that bank, President of the Bank of America, California, Lynn Pike. Thank you, Dr. Starr, and thank you for the decades of insightful and compelling work that you've done to document and analyze this grand experiment we call California and the many dreams and dreamers it has produced. Another California historian, Carrie McWilliams, once called California the great exception. Tonight, we are honoring some remarkable men and women who have been instrumental in making our state the exceptional place that it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're feeling the excitement and energy that I'm feeling to be in this room with so many of California's best and brightest. 
This is indeed a great moment for our state. On behalf of more than 35,000 Bank of America Associates in California, it's my privilege to congratulate the first inductees into the California Hall of Fame. Sponsoring this project is a natural fit for Bank of America. From the day we opened our doors in San Francisco until now, our company ha has been integrally connected with the economic growth and creative vitality of a great state. We're proud to have supported many of the individuals and industries that have driven the California dream. Thousands of people, many of them school children, will visit the California Hall of Fame in the weeks, months, and years to come. We hope that they will find the inspiration here to dream large, to keep us on the cutting edge, and to follow a course that will one day lead them to become inductees into the California Hall of Fame. Thank you. Please welcome the founder of the California Hall of Fame, honorary chair of the California Museum for History, Women, and the Arts, Maria Schreiber. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. I want to welcome everybody to this extraordinary night tonight and say I am really over the moon, over the moon that all of you came, because I know everybody on this stage has an incredibly busy life, over the moon that all of you came. And this is really an extraordinary night for California, for this museum, and I hope for all of your families. Um, I want to begin by thanking several people who made this evening possible. Thank you, Kevin Starr, for everything you've taught my husband and I about California. Um, I want to thank Lynn Pike, uh, who stepped up and believed in this concept when it was just an idea. We had no idea what it was. And she said, OK, I'll buy in. It's terrific. Um, I want to thank my friend Robert Graham, who designed this extraordinary medal, which we call the Spirit of California. And uh, he is one of our great California artists, one of our great treasures. And uh, I would run down to his office. Uh, Patty lives near me, so she knows where that is in Venice with my ponytail and sweatpants and say, I need a medal, I need a medal. And he was like, oi. And then we'd go through all of his stuff. And I go, no, not this, not this. He goes, no, it's this. I go, no, it's not. He goes, I'm the artist. I tell you what it is. I go, no, it's not. I'm not. And I went through all his boxes and uh, literally and on my hands and knees. And we came across this image. And I said, what's that? He said, I don't know. It's a woman. It's a woman. I said, OK, that's the spirit of California. She's dreaming. I want it. And he goes, OK, take it. I said, I want it for like everything. I want to put it on candles and books. And he goes, fine, take it. So uh, I want to thank him uh, for his generosity and his patience uh, with me, because I kept coming back and back and back. And uh, I also want to take a moment to thank Claudia French and the entire uh, uh, organization, the team here at the California Museum, uh, with John O'Connor, the genius behind this Hall of Fame exhibit. They have done an incredible job. Uh, so I want to thank them uh, so much. Um, I also want to thank Carl Bendix and his entire team that made this uh, auditorium look terrific. Uh, I want to thank uh, Daniel Zingali and the entire Office of the First Lady, which has been working on this in such an extraordinary way. And, and I want to thank the former governors for gracing us with their presence here tonight, Governor Davis and Sharon Davis, Governor Brown. Are you Attorney General Brown, Governor Brown? All, all of those things. Uh, another great family legacy. And all the elected officials who are gracing us here um, tonight. I want to I wanna thank all of you for coming. All the governors and uh, first ladies are honorary chairs of this museum, and it's the only museum in the state that has uh, that legacy. So I want to really thank you for coming here and elevating uh, the presence. And all of you, I could go through the whole list, but they told me that was improper because I might leave somebody out. But uh, I want to thank the elected officials who came here tonight to honor these extraordinary individuals and their stories. So. Uh, that's really important. As we all know in this room, uh, California is home to 37 million people. If you think about that figure for a moment, pause. It is more diverse than probably anywhere on the earth. It is bigger than most countries, and it is the most innovative place on the planet. This is a place where people come from all over the world. They come here to achieve their dreams. They come here to work hard. The competition is stiff and the hurdles are high. 
So think for a moment what you would have to do to stand out in a state of 37 million people. Think of how high you would have to dream, how long you would have to stay at your dream, how much perseverance you would have to have, how much courage you would have to have, and just plain chutzpah. You'd have to go out and do what your heart and mind ordered you to do. When you learn about every single person up here and their parents, when you learn their stories and you hear about their struggles, it just takes your breath away. What I really admire about them is that they all struggled and they kept at it. They never took the word no to heart. People said they were crazy, said they were nuts, they would never amount to anything, and they just kept at it. And they achieved what they wanted to do, and in so doing, they changed not just the state, but the entire world. So it is a privilege to honor this group here for their spirit and their drive and their courage. And it's a joy to enshrine them in this museum and to the archives which are housed in the California Museum for all generations to come to learn about them. And I hope to be inspired, really to be inspired by their struggles and to be inspired by their dreams. So now it's my privilege to introduce another dreamer uh, who people said was nuts who people said would never amount to anything, and uh, who never listened, and who has his fair share of chutzpah, my husband and your governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria, for the wonderful introduction. And thank you also, she's doing such a fantastic job. Maria is actually the driving force behind revitalizing the California Museum of History and transforming it into a vibrant learning center where people can experience the untold history of women and men who have contributed so much to this wonderful state. And now she's giving us a wonderful chance to honor the trailblazers and the world changers the people whose imprint is forever stamped on our culture. So let's give Maria a big hand for the great work that she's doing. Now make no mistake that for all the great things that we have here in California, it is actually the people of the state who truly make it great. California is dynamic because California people are dynamic. From the start, we attracted risk takers who were willing to drop everything and struggle across the untamed continent to make their fortunes. And that pioneer spirit did not end with the gold rush. It is no accident that the film industry started right here in California. And then later on the technology industry and then the biotech industry, nanotech, clean tech, and the list goes on and on and on. These are maverick industries, visionary industries that could only grow in the California climate. And this is where ideas or any dream can come true. And that is why people from across the country and all over from the world can come here to achieve what others consider impossible. Now this is something that I know firsthand uh, because for 40, 45 years ago, I was in Austria, in Graz as a little skinny boy. On the outside, I looked like just any other boy who would go to school and play soccer and so on, but on the inside, Hmm. On the inside, I was on fire with ideas and with dreams and with ambition. I wanted to be the greatest bodybuilding champion and the biggest movie star. Of course, every time I mentioned those things in Austria, they laughed and they said, you're absolutely crazy, that would never happen. Well, no, it could never have happened in Graz, Austria, but here in California, it could happen. So as soon as I could, I packed my bags and then moved to California, and let me tell you, I arrived here with $20 in my pocket. I didn't know the language or the culture, but right away I knew I had found my home. I am a Californian. I've always been a Californian. I say these words even though I was born half a world away on the other side of the globe. Because being a Californian is not about where you start, it is about your journey and where you find your home. 
and California is the home of hopes and dreams for so many. That is why immigrants to this state hold it with such deep affection. California welcomes not only you, it welcomes also your dreams. The people that we're honoring here tonight may not be uh, native sons or daughters, but they are Californians to the core. They embody everything that is great and noble about this great state. Now, this Hall of Fame pays tribute to those Californians who have shaped and continue to shape this state and the world. This Hall of Fame will do more than enlighten, it will inspire. I want our young people to see these accomplishments and believe not just that they can become doctors, but that they can cure great diseases of our age and change public health around the globe. I want them to learn about these lives and believe not just that they can be architects, but that the world is a canvas where, you can, where concrete and steel can be crafted into timeless art. I want them to know about these heroes and believe not just that they can be pilots, but that they can blaze a path into the unknown and unlock the mysteries of, uh, pace, of space. I want people of every age to know these stories, to reflect on the lives of these brilliant Californians and themselves be moved to greatness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great pleasure to say a few words about one of the 13 inductees and a great hero of mine, and that is Ronald Reagan. As a boy, Ronald Wilson Reagan believed passionately in the American dream. As a man, as a governor, and as a president, he was the embodiment of that dream and all it represented. He was an ordinary boy from Illinois, where he was a lifeguard, a football player, and a student body president. And he followed that dream as far as it could take him, to Hollywood, to Sacramento, and then to the White House. Now, in 1964, when he was still an actor, Ronald Reagan was rejected for a part in Gore Vidal's film, The Best Man, because the producers said that he didn't look presidential enough. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, the 20 years later, when he won re-election in a historic landslide, he was the very model of what every modern president should be. As president, he was a champion of democracy. He believed in the power of the individual and the right of everyone to pursue goals and dreams just as he did on his unique and remarkable journey. So he sounded the trumpet of freedom and lived to see the walls of repression come tumbling down. The state of California honors our 33rd governor and the 40th president of the United States for his great leadership. Reagan and Patty Davis are receiving the medal on behalf of their father. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my uh, honor and pleasure to introduce the next inductee, Cesar Chavez. His uh, honor will be accepted by his son, Paul Chavez. Cesar Estrada Chavez became a migrant farm worker at the age of 10 when his family lost its farm during the Great Depression. He attended 30 different schools, even though he quit after the eighth grade to work full-time in the fields. Deprived of opportunities by the circumstances of his birth, he stooped and he harvested and he dreamed. He dreamed that he would find a better way so that coming generations of men, women, and children would not be exploited as he and his family had been. In time, he found that better way. He created and organized the first successful farm workers union in the United States, what we now know as the United Farm Workers. Robert F. Kennedy called him one of the heroic figures of our time. President Clinton 
posthumously awarded him the Medal of Freedom. And his birthday, March 31st, is an official holiday in California and seven other states. The state of California honors this social visionary and community organizer for his courage and determination in fighting for the dignity and rights of farm workers and every individual in our society. Paul Chavez is receiving the medal on behalf of his father. A son of Oakland and the New West, a modern mayor of Carmel, Clint Eastwood Jr. is the iconic image of the Old West and its eternal values. From Rowdy Yates and Rawhide to Bill Money and Unforgiven, to the man with no name in Sergio Leone Spaghetti Westerns, to San Francisco Poli Police uh, Inspector Dirty Harry Callahan, to the fight trainer Frankie Dunn and Million Dollar Baby, Eastwood's indelible characters are the model of rugged, righteous, and autonomous individualism. As an actor, composer, and Oscar-winning director and producer, the scope, brilliance, versatility of his career is unmatched in modern American film. The state of California honors this inspiring film legend for his lifetime of achievement and as a, as a filmmaker and as a good citizen of this state. Clint Eastwood. Uh, intro. Uh, Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart was uh, the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean uh, not too long after Lindbergh did, maybe 14, 13, 14 months afterwards. She was the, uh, uh, she set altitude records, 14,000 feet in aviation. She, she f was the first person, of, regardless of gender, to fly from the uh, Hawaiian Islands to the mainland. Uh, she was just a, a fabulous uh, character in aviation at that particular time. And, and then when she um, took off to become the first woman to fly around the world, she created, by her disappearance, she created one of the great mysteries of all time. Um, people are still talk, and there's been many, many things written about uh, Amelia Earhart and, and the, the search thereof. And I remember as a little boy living in Redding, California, and we used to draw pictures, and we always drew airplane pictures. And uh, we always fantasized about discovering Amelia Earhart somewhere out there in the Pacific. So it's a great pleasure of me to, uh, to talk about her tonight. She said, she wrote to her husband before she disappeared, uh, women must try to do things that men have tried. It, uh, when, when they fail, then f their failure must be a challenge to others. So she's a great inspiration to all aviation enthusiasts and to all Californians, all Americans. Amy Kuttner is receiving the medal on behalf of her aunt.
As a young man in the mid-19th century, John Muir dropped out of college and enrolled in what he called the University of the Wilderness, walking a thousand miles from Indiana to Florida. From that point, his life had a mission, and in time it would become a destination, a place called California. He was taken with the grandeur and natural beauty of our state. In a time when most others were determined to exploit it, Muir was, was just as determined to preserve it. He is one of the most beloved figures in the history of California because he devoted his life to preserving the state's natural beauty. He founded the Sierra Club, to this day one of the world's most important and influential environmental organizations. Upon seeing Yosemite Valley for the first time, Muir wrote, no temple made with hands can, can compare to Yosemite. Thanks to his essays, books, teachings, and battles to preserve natural beauty, we can all still worship in that temple and many others, like Sequoia, the Sierra Nevada, and Muir Woods, just as he did more than a century ago. The state of California honors this father of the modern environmental movement for his achievement in preserving California's natural beauty. Ross Hanna is receiving the medal on behalf of his grandfather. Frank Owen Gehry is one of the world's greatest architects. From the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain, to the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles, his buildings are dreamscapes that turn imagination into reality. His career in California has spanned four decades, earning him some of the world's most prestigious awards in the field of architecture. Through the decades, he seemed to create with one principle in mind. If he could imagine it, they would build it. Our urban landscape, landscape is a richer and better place before, because Frank Gehry's flights of impossible fancy are realized in brick and mortar. Museums throughout the world exhibit his models and drawings, and he continues to inspire worldwide awe with the stunning creativity of his new art architectural work. The state of California honors this extraordinary architect for a lifetime of breathtaking achievement. Walter Elias Disney arrived in Los Angeles with 40 bucks in his pocket and an unfinished cartoon in his suitcase. From that foundation, he built an empire that revolutionized animation, Hollywood, and the entertainment around the world. His imagination gave us characters like Mickey Mouse, 
Donald Duck. They didn't put Goofy in here, but. <laughs> who spoke to the world in every language, even when they didn't say a word. His dreams of Disneyland and beautiful movies found a comfortable place in the hearts of children of all ages. His work is timeless, classic, and modern all at once. His legacy lives on at the Cal California Institute of the Arts, which he nurtured and endowed. And I want to add the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> The state of California honors this artist, dreamer, and innovator for his many contributions to our state and society. Diane Disney Miller is receiving the medal on behalf of her father. family has personified the spirit of California. George Hearst was a rough-hewn man who carved the miner's fortune out of the land and inspired to do good by serving in the United States Senate. His wife, Phoebe, was a cultured teacher who inherited his fortune and established a family legacy of philanthropy that survives more than a century later. Their only child, William Randolph Hearst, became a legendary American figure by building a media empire that also survives more than 100 years after it was founded in San Francisco. His Hearst Castle in San Simeon is one of California's great treasures and is surrounded by a 128 square mile ranch that preserves more than 18 miles of coastline and remains the largest privately owned working cattle ranch along the central California coast. The Hearst legacy lives on today through the many descendants of William Randolph Hearst the Hearst Corporation, and the William Randolph Hearst Foundation. The state of California honors the Hearst family for its contributions to civic life, philanthropy, and public service. Receiving the award on behalf of his family, Steve Hurst. <clears throat> when uh, David Packard and Bill Hewitt Went to work in Palo Alto. Went to work in a Palo Alto garage in 1939. They intended to build a audio oscillator and maybe start a little business. Thus was born a company called Hewlett Packard. Word is, um, Packard lost the coin toss. <laughs> the industry was to become known as high tech, and the place eventually Silicon Valley. Also born in the HP garage that day was the legacy of David Packard and his wife, Lucille Stalter Packard. It is the David and Lucille Packard Foundation which has done much to change the lives one by one and to inspire millions of Californians. The Packard family and its foundations have provided leadership in creating Monter Monterey Bay Aquarium, the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, and the Packard's Humanity Humanities Institute which is dedicated to archaeology, music, film preservation, and education. The state of California honors the Packard family for its business leadership, philanthropy, and ongoing contributions to our California society. Receiving the award on behalf of his family, David Woodley Packard.
here. Dr. David D. Ho was a 29-year-old resident in internal medicine at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles when he came into contact with some of the first reported cases of what was later identified as AIDS. From then on, his life work had a meaning and a mission. As he said, this is a problem for the world and therefore we're going to solve it. His trailblazing work has helped mankind move closer to finding a cure for AIDS. He was among the first researchers to propose that AIDS is caused by a virus, helping the world understand how it behaves and how it is best treated. For his work, he was awarded the Presidential Citizens Medal and was named Time Magazine's Man of the Year. His work over two decades has helped hundreds of thousands of people live longer, healthier lives. The state of California honors Dr. David Ho for his groundbreaking research on HIV and his steadfast determination to find a cure for AIDS. Dr. Sally Kristen Rye, astronaut, physicist, professor, and author, was the first American woman in space. She got there the old-fashioned way. After graduating with a PhD in physics from Stanford, she answered a help wanted ad. <laughs> this was one posted in the paper by NASA and said women as well as men would, for the first time, be considered for training as astronauts. 7,000 men and 1,251 women answered the ad. 29 men and six women were accepted. Sally Rye is the only one who made history. Back on Earth, after spending 343 hours in space, Dr. Wright has devoted herself to encouraging young women to study science and mathematics. Through her work as president and CEO of Sally Wright Science and as a professor of physics at the Uni University of California, San Diego. Our future lies with today's kids and tomorrow's space exploration, she says. The state of California honors Dr. Sally K. Rye for making history in space and her ongoing dedication to educating and inspiring future generations. Billie Jean King grew up on the public courts of Long Beach, won 39 Grand Slam tennis titles, and took on the greatest players of her time, Margaret Court, Yvonne Goolagong, Rosie Casals, Martina Navratilova, and Chris Everett. But she's best remembered for fighting and beating two greater and more intransigent foes, stereotype and discrimination. She did that in many ways. Through her advocacy for the passage of Title IX in 1972 and in the Houston Astrodome one night in 1973 when she beat a 55-year-old former men's Wimbledon champion named Bobby Riggs, 6'4", 6'3", 6'3". Before that night, Billie Jean was a hero to many girls who loved and played tennis, including me. After that night, she was an iconic figure who changed the role of women forever and for good. After the match, she acknowledged the pressure. Quote, 
I thought it would set us back 50 years if I didn't win, she said. <laughs> that match was not about tennis, it was about social change, and I knew its outcome could have a significant impact on all women's self-esteem. A quarter century later, Life magazine named her one of the 100 most important Americans of the 20th century. This past August, the USTA National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, was renamed in her honor the first woman ever to have a significant sports center bear her name. Thanks to Billie Jean King, women's self-esteem has come a long way, and her lifelong pursuit of equality for boys and girls continues. The state of California honors this great athlete for being a champion in sports and in life. She was a hero of mine too, Sally. So Arnold started, so I'm going to announce our last inductee. The eighth and youngest child of sharecroppers in Eatonton, Georgia, Alice Monsignor Walker was the first African-American woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction. A child... A child of the Civil Rights Movement, inspired equally by her mother and by Martin Luther King Jr., whom she met when she was a college freshman, Walker believes words can change the world and lives a life that proves the pen is mightier than the sword. Her novel, The Color Purple, written in her adopted home of Mendocino, moved the nation. It was and is a literary phenomenon that has been born again and again as a motion picture directed by Steven Spielberg, now a Broadway play, and it is a book that is read by generation after generation after generation. Walker is an activist and a social visionary whose advocacy for the dispossessed has spanned the globe and will live for generations. The state of California honors this author and this advocate for her inspiring work and her uncommon decency. And I present to you the first inductees to the California Hall of Fame. Could you rise? Bravo. Bravo, bravo. I want to congratulate every single person up on this stage. I want to thank all of you so much for coming. I felt a little bit like Vanna White. I always wondered what that felt like, but it was okay. And uh, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope you'll join us over in the museum. I hope you'll go up and look at the exhibit, which is on the second floor. Everybody here has donated a tremendous amount uh, from their family and from their journeys so that you can see it. Wolfgang Puck donated the uh, catering. He's an Austrian Californian and a great friend. And once again, I want to thank you and congratulate all of you and thank all of you for coming. Thank you. Please remain in your seats until the inductees have left the stage. Thank you.